Hey friends, how are you all? Today is going to be a very informative video on changes in AI for the last seven years, summarized into just 10 minutes. Let's dive into it right away. Uh, let's see who are the beneficiaries here. AI students, new to AI, quick learners who want to learn very quick, uh, those who want to learn with these examples, interested in the latest people who are interested in the latest AI developments, interview attendees because there are a lot of ai jobs now interview attendees this is very very helpful and also knowledge seekers for all these people this will be a very helpful video let's get to the first slide here so the first point we have here is one of the most important milestones in ai is with the introduction of transformers in 2017 so this is a picture of transformer with the introduction of transformers everything changed in ai so what is it so with the introduction of transformers we have something called the gpt which is generative pre-trained transformers came into existence with the introduction of transformers with all the data on the internet and more number of gpus that we can dump into particular effort so we have gpt and then we have GPU and we have more number of GPUs and more data on the internet. It's like neurons in our brain that can do sentiment analysis. So the GPTs are almost working like the neurons in our brain. It is doing the processing and with access to more and more GPUs and with access to more and more data on the internet, GPTs can do magics. It can understand if human is feeling good or bad about a product. That was that started in 2017. With the introduction of GPTs, it could actually understand human feelings. It could understand if the human is feeling good or bad about a particular product. That type of analysis of human, that type of understanding of the human feelings is called GPT AI. Now, after that, we have something called GPT-3, which is reading more and more data from the internet and with access to more GPUs and data. So with the advent of GPT-3, it could predict better than a model which is built for research. What does that mean? So we, are, for example, let's take the example of chemistry, right? There were a lot of models built in chemistry. Those m models were only for doing research and analysis in chemistry, right? With GPT-3 and with more GPUs and more access to the internet, it could do more than what the specialized chemistry model can do. For example, someone could ask this model, that is this model means GPT-3, how to create nerve gas isn't it shocking gpt3 is accessible to the public now with gpt3 and with access to additional gpus and with all the data on the internet gpt3 could overperform a model built in chemistry for chemical research gpt3 which has access which is accessed by the public could create nerve gas. See how dangerous that can be. It can do better than research grade models that was used in chemistry. And no one even knew about this. So after GP3, what is next? Let's go to the next slide. Now we after that we have GPT4. This can do theory of mind model what is theory of mind model it can predict what humans are thinking so first it could predict the feelings now it can predict the thinking gpt4 can predict what human beings are thinking gpt4 has access to all these extra gpus it has access to the entire internet it has access to the data on the internet it has access to the books on the internet it has access to the research on the internet it has access to psychology fiction non-fiction all this with all this data all it has to do is to predict the next word next word that humans are thinking 
So now with all this access to data and with all this access to GPUs, it's able to predict what humans are thinking. So the first step was what humans are feeling. The next step is GPT-4. It's, it can predict what humans are thinking now and then it can predict what a certain population will do and how they will react to a certain situation so let's say a particular government want to predict what a certain population would do for example like i'm just taking a hypothetical example here us the government of us wants to predict what the people of a certain part of the world speaking a certain language how they would react to a certain situation or a certain issue it can be political it can be anything so gpt4 it is able to predict what a population would do now a certain government can predict what a certain people of a certain part of the world people speaking a certain language how they would react to a certain issue how they would think about a certain situation this can be predicted by gpt4 provided there is enough access to GPUs and data. Now the next one is artificial general intelligence is the next one after GPT-4. Artificial general intelligence, which is called AGI in 2024. It's a machine or a software that can do anything that a humans can do and more. That is the next step. AGI, which is the pinnacle of AI, can do anything that a humans can do and even more. That is the final step here. In, L in healthcare, it could do a surgery better than a surgeon. In trading, in stock market trading, it could do trading and risk management better than humans. It could do war. It could perform war and have military capabilities better than humans. That is what artificial general intelligence is about. The primary limitation at this point, the primary limitation of AGI is hardware limitation. That is a uh, limitation of GPUs and limitation of TPUs. What is TPU? TPU is higher speed and efficiency compared to GPU. As long as it has enough number of GPUs and TPUs, it could perform war and can have military capabilities better than humans. That is where that is where AGI or artificial general intelligence is taking us. Let's get to the next slide. Uh, then we have what is called daily two, daily three. They have the ability to work on different types of data. And this is called multimodality. Okay. It can take input as a text or audio and turn it into image. So let's say, for example, uh, someone is committing a crime and they paint me a picture of a man who would have done this crime and we are feeding it to daily three or daily two and it's actually giving you the picture of a person who would have actually done the crime. Let's get to the next one. The next one is Sora. Sora, what can Sora do? Open AI introduced Sora, which is, which is a text to video model. So now, initially, it was text converting into images. Now, with Sora, it can convert text into videos. So it can create imaginative scenes from text. Just by providing text, it can create imaginative scenes. It is limit. It is a limited version released only to certain people. There is, at, at, as of now, it is a limited version released only to certain people, like movie filmmakers and designers and the reason is because they want to take feedback to make it more to make all the improvements so that's a limited version but now for you to use this sora or for you to use something called in video ai in video ai is another text to video converter first of all you should have you you should have access to premium chat gpt account right so you don't need to wait for sora you can use in video ai if you have access to premium chat GPT account. So what? how does it look like? In video AI, you text type type the text here of the video that you want to generate and it will automatically generate videos for you. All you need is a well-written prompt and you can generate beautiful videos. Let's get to the next slide. Now, the next one we have here is a company called Figure with in collaboration with OpenAI is finally coming to speech-to-speech -speech reasoning. What does that mean? 
figure a company is created robots in collaboration with OpenAI, and it has given a physical body to ChatGPT because everybody is familiar with ChatGPT, but it was just an app. Now with robots coming into picture in collaboration with Chat ChatGPT, now ChatGPT has a physical body. So the company uh, name is Figure, and it has developed these robots that can do logical reasoning. What does that mean? These robots are not pre-programmed. They are using neural networks, which is the same as the networks that is in our brain, which is the same as network of neurons that is in our brain. They are using neural networks to learn the behavior. So every time they're learning the behavior, they're not pre-programmed. It's improving on the behavior step by step using trial and error because it can understand our language and it can react. That is what speech to speech reasoning is all about. These robots are going to take away a lot of jobs, but at the same time, a lot of new jobs will be created. We now have GPT-5, which is robots interacting with humans. And now in my upcoming video, I'll be explaining jobs that will be more in demand and jobs that will be less in demand or the jobs that will disappear in because of the recent changes in AI. So in the next video, I will explain which all jobs will be in demand, which all jobs might disappear. Because as you can see, robots are now speaking to human. They are, can understand, they can feel, they can think, and they can do many jobs better than humans. So uh, as always, I really thank you for watching this video. Simplified, easy to understand video. And for me to have the motivation to keep creating useful contents like this, please subscribe because when you subscribe, that gives me the motivation to create useful, simplified videos like this. And thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I talk to you later. Bye now.